Hello. It's wonderful that you're able to join us. It's Christmas Eve. Christmas is nearly here. Just a few hours to go. But the big question is, are you ready? Have you done everything you need to do? Or are you still dashing around? Have you wrapped your presents? Have you written your cards? Has a turkey arrived yet? Have you got your favourite Christmas hat or jumper ready? There's so much to think about, isn't there? In fact, I've just remembered, I'm not ready yet either. That's better, and now I feel more ready. We can be so busy trying to get ready that we can lose the time to stop and enjoy Christmas for what it's really all about. So as we approach the evening before Christmas, that's what we're going to do for a few minutes now. That's what this service is all about. We're just going to stop and make sure we are really ready for Christmas by reminding ourselves with your help of what happened on that first Christmas day long ago. And here's the funny thing. None of the people involved in that first Christmas, Mary and Joseph, the innkeeper, the shepherds, the wise men, were totally ready. They didn't have time to prepare everything properly for the arrival of the baby Jesus. Nothing went to plan and lots of unexpected things happened. Some of them were not good things either. But on the first Christmas day, that didn't really matter because they were ready where it mattered most, inside here. So when God sent love down to earth in the form of a baby, Mary and Joseph, the shepherds and the wise men were all ready to welcome Jesus into their hearts. Shall we get ready to welcome Jesus too? Let me just pray for us for a minute. Heavenly Father, in this time of excitement and busyness, help us to find space to remember your son Jesus and to welcome him into our hearts, our homes and our lives. Amen. So what we're going to do in this service just for a while is we're going to remind ourselves through words and songs about the events of that first Christmas day. And then Chelsea will come and talk to us. So hopefully some of you are going to recognise some, uh, some familiar faces and thank you for uh, helping me tell that story. Once upon a time there's, there's a carpenter named Joseph. There was this man called Joseph who was engaged to this, um, this, this girl called Mary and in one of his dreams um, an angel said um, don't worry, don't worry, M Mary is going to have a baby and you will marry him and he will be called Jesus, the Son of God. So they married as, the, um, as Joseph was told. Mary was doing the housework in the house whilst Joseph went out to do the carpentry when there was a brilliant white flash and the snow white angel came down and spoke softly. I am Gabriel, one of the main angels. I am here because God sent me to say that you are going to have the son of God and you are going to name it Jesus. <gasps> Mary was petrified. Um, and sad and excited and nervous all at once. The angel then disappeared. So Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem. It was a really long walk. Mary, Mary had to sit on the donkey for most of it and Joseph had to walk carrying it. Mary was getting, her, Mary's belly was getting bigger every minute.
So Mary and Joseph went on long, dusty roads. Finally, they arrived in Bethlehem. They all, Joseph knocked on each door and said, me and my wife are really tired and my wife is going to have a baby. Do you any, do you have any room? But all the innkeepers said no. So Joseph asked another innkeeper and the innkeeper said, I have no room in my inn, but I do have room in my stable. You could stay there. So they went into the stable. And then the baby was born. And um, Mary and Mary had a baby. There were there were lots of different animals in the barn. <laughs> Surrounding their sheep up in the hills. Suddenly, an angel came down and spoke to them. His voice sounded as if it were a choir. It were a choir that was singing peacefully. It was beautifully calm and very and nice and melodic. melodic. It told them that Christ has been born in a manger in Bethlehem. The shepherds hurried off to visit the special baby. It was on a
still saw a star. And they knew a new king was born. So they got on their camels and they they trotted far, far away. The three wise men followed a star to from the east to find King Herod. King Herod lied when they asked him where Jesus was. He said, I don't know. The three wise men followed the star again um, to Bethlehem where Jesus was lying in a manger. They brought gifts for him. The gifts were frankincense, myrrh and gold. They then left but didn't tell King Herod where Jesus was. They went straight home, a different path. Kings of Orient are bearing gifts. We travel so far. So that's the end of the Christmas story as we normally hear it. So thank you to everyone who has helped in reminding us. But actually, there's a bit of the nativity story that we don't often hear which Roxy and Daniel are going to share with us now. It's the story of Jesus' family running away in terror and becoming refugees in a foreign land. It reminds us that Jesus, the Son of God, didn't come as a king to live in the safety and luxury of a palace. He came to live a life which had all the messiness, uncertainty, disappointment and problems that many of us experience in our own lives. So after such a difficult year as we've had, it's great comfort to remember that Jesus knows exactly how we feel because he's experienced these things too and is with us through our darkest times. So let's hear Roxy and Daniel complete the nativity story now. When the wise men had gone, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, the angel said. Take Jesus and Mary to escape Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search Jesus. For Jesus to kill him. So Joseph got up, took Jesus and Mary during the night. They, they left for Egypt, where he stayed until Herod died. When Herod realised that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was furious. He gave orders to kill all the boys aged two or younger in Bethlehem and the surrounding area. This was to try and kill the new king as his plan to find the location of the new king from the wise men had failed. After Herod had died, Jesus had another dream in which an angel appeared to him. The angel said, get up, take Jesus and Mary to go back to the Israel. But those who were trying to kill Jesus are dead. So Joseph got up, took Jesus and Mary, and they got back to Israel. But when they heard that Herod's son was now king of Judea, he was afraid to go there. So instead they went to Galilee and lived on the old town of Nazareth. The end. Merry Christmas Eve, my friends. I'm really excited to bring you the Christmas Eve message today. And so I thought that we would think about the characters that were at the Nativity story. Can we think of all the people whom we know were there? Can you name them all? I wonder if that's actually accurate. Because actually, in all the plays that we do, in the videos that we watch, and the songs that we sing, we actually assume a lot about this story. For instance, we don't know how many shepherds were there, but shepherds often worked in a group of people, and there would be old men and young men and children all working uh, to protect their big flock of sheep. And we know that the wise men actually weren't there at the birth of Jesus, but showed up months later. And we don't know how many of those there were. We just know that there were three gifts, frankincense, gold, and myrrh. 
We know that they traveled from very far away, and I imagine because they were rich, educated, noble men, that they would have a lot of people traveling with them on camels. And then we have Mary and Joseph. We don't always assume a whole lot about Mary and Joseph, except for the fact that they were had gave birth in an or they went to an inn and were denied. When actually there's no mention of an innkeeper, just that there was no room in town and it was very busy. So there's a lot of things that we assume about this story. But what we do know is that God invited all sorts of people to come and witness him in human form. It's my little baby Jesus. So I'm going to put him in this manger. Let him sleep. So many people were invited to be a part of this experience. God was coming down to earth to live amongst us. Do I remember the name he was given? That means God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. That's what it is. And so God chose to come in human form, not just being in as an adult male, but came as an infant. So he was meek and mild and gent he had to be gentle and had to be cared for and nurtured. He had to, he was a part of humanness from the moment he drew his first breath, just like you and me, that we were born. And so God has been a part of that entire process. So the wise men, they waited for a very, very long time. They knew that a new king would be born and they knew when the stars were to align where the planets were to align, that something special was going to happen. And so when they saw that very special star in the sky, they immediately got on their camels and traveled all the way to Bethlehem. They had been waiting for God for a very long time. And so they decided to go and see if they, what they thought was going to happen was indeed going to happen. Then God sent angels to be with his shepherds. His shepherds, <laughs> he invited the shepherds who were considered to be outcasts. They were nomadic people that worked just out in the fields outside of the city walls. They were dirty and unclean and they smelled like animals. They weren't always the most educated and yet God decided to invite both of these groups of people the educated and the uneducated, the rich and the poor, the center of society and the outcast. What does that tell us about who God is and who he invites into his presence? And then we come to Mary and Joseph. Joseph was a carpenter, hardworking. He was due to Mary, 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 Mary. And he loved her very much and wanted to make her her bride. But Mary was a faithful woman. Mary loved God so much that when the angels came to told her she was pregnant, she accepted the, the what was given to her. Joseph, on the other hand, had in mind that maybe he could divorce her, or not divorce her, just not marry her. Um, and maybe just kind of leave her, leave her be. But he knew in society that she would be considered an outcast and, and might be even put to death for those actions, being caught pregnant without a husband. And so he decided to marry her anyway. So God came to them, Mary, in the form of kicks in her belly and morning sickness and all of the things that come with growing a child and he came to Joseph in all of his uncertainty. He gave him rest. He allowed him to sleep and dream dreams where he would be comforted by the truth and to not be afraid and to take Mary's hand. And so Joseph and Mary 
went on this adventure together all the way to Bethlehem. And they would bear the son, Jesus. God with us, Emmanuel. Now I love this story because it invites all sorts of people, the young, the old, the new and the waiting. And I always think this is how church should be. When we look around our churches and our communities, we should notice the young and the old. We should notice the rich and the poor. We should notice the educated, the uneducated. We should notice these same things and know that we were each called and loved by God and invited into his presence. So each and every one of these people was called by God to come and witness the lo love in its truest and purest form. Some things change and some things stay the same. Ooh, sorry. Whoops, I dropped a wise man. Dropped a wise man. Some things stay the same. And so this I know to be true about the Christmas story. That at the center of this Christmas story is Jesus. God with us. Emmanuel. Now when he took on flesh, he took on flesh like all of us do. Being born into the world unexpected. Being nurtured and cared for and fed and all of those things. And he would eventually grow up to be put on a tree and to take all the sins of the entire world upon him. And that is the greatest love. Between that moment of being born and being put on the tree, being put on the cross, I'm just using a Christmas tree. He would teach us many lessons about how to love one another, about how to stand with one another in solidarity how to be a good neighbor and a good friend, a good daughter, a good son. He would teach us all sorts of things. But most of all, he invites us to be loved. To be loved in a way that only God knows how to love us. Simple. You, dear friend, are completely loved and invited to, into the presence of God because the presence of God requires all kinds. Last, I'd like to show you this beautiful quilt. Every year for Christmas, my mother sends me all the way from North Dakota something that she's created with her sewing machine. The woman has more talent in her pinky finger than I do in my entire body. And she makes these things with so much love. And it never ceases to amaze me how she creates an entire piece, like my tablecloth, an entire piece of fabric out of many different pieces. All these tiny little triangles cut out with precision and sewn together in love to make an entire tablecloth that comes together in the wholeness in the sacredness of love. And so I look at this and I'm reminded that at Christmas, each one of these little triangles is us. We are invited into love. And so I hope we accept that invitation, whether it's via angels or something we've been waiting for or even something unexpected. But I hope that you, A, know that you're invited into God's love and God's presence. And B, I hope that you accept and explore that for yourself this Christmas. Thank you, friends. Merry Christmas. So thank you, Chelsea, for those thoughts on Christmas. It really, really was really helpful. So now, uh, well, I'd like to introduce, uh, for those of you who've not yet had the chance to meet, I'd like to you now introduce uh, the Reverend Alison, our, our new vicar, and she's so welcome. This is her first Christmas with us. So I'd just like to uh, pass over to her, and she's going to lead us through some prayers. So we're going to pray now, and we're going to use the things underneath my Christmas tree to help us as we draw close to God. 
So first of all, we're going to give thanks for all the good things that he gives us. And we're going to think about this as we think about the Christmas presents that we're going to be expecting on Christmas morning. God gave us the best present of all when he gave us Jesus. So as we think about the true meaning of Christmas, let's thank God for Jesus. Loving God, we thank you that you sent Jesus to us. We thank you that he came to make our world a better place. And we ask that you will help us to share with all our friends his love and his peace. In his name we pray. Amen. So we're going to think now about people who were looking for Jesus. And there was a star that led the wise men to, to find Jesus in the stable. And so as we think about this star, maybe some of you have got a star on top of your Christmas tree. We think about people who are travelling towards Jesus. So let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that the star led the wise men to Jesus. We ask that all those people who were seeking Jesus this Christmas will find him. We ask this in his name. Amen. So we're going to thank God again. Now we're going to thank God for our homes and for our families. And as we do that, we're going to think about people who we'd really like to be seeing this Christmas, but have to stay away from us because we know that we could be spreading infection. So as we thank God for our homes, let's remember them too. So loving God, we thank you for our homes and our families. We thank you for all the warmth and joy we share. And we remember as well those people who we'd like to share Christmas with but can't be with us this year. And we just ask that you will be with them and bless them and help us to feel close to them even though we're apart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Christmas is a time when, sadly, some people don't have anywhere to go, any food to eat or a nice warm home. So as we think about this can of baked beans, we're going to think about people who are relying on food banks and charity Christmas dinners. So let's pray. Lord, we be with those people today who are homeless and who are relying on food banks and charity dinners for their Christmas celebrations. We thank you for all of the people who work generously to make sure other people have a good Christmas. We ask that you'll bless them and bless all those in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Jesus was a tiny baby. And as we look at our teddy bear, we think of mothers and babies everywhere, especially mothers and newborn babies. And we ask that God will be with them and keep them safe. Loving God, we thank you for all mothers and newborn babies. And we ask that you will be with them and keep them safe. We ask that the midwives and doctors and nurses who care for them will be strengthened and be able to work hard this Christmas. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And finally, we're going to pray for ourselves and we're going to ask God to keep us all safe. And we're going to pray for all those people who are sick in hospital and ask God to draw close to them too. So let's pray. Loving God, we ask that you will keep us all safe this Christmas. We pray for all of our friends and family and ask that you will keep them well. We pray for those people who are sick and in hospital. And we pray for doctors, nurses, technicians, care assistants and anyone associated with their care. We ask that you will be with them and make them full of your joy and your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
So loving God, we pray that we will all be drawn together in your name. Amen. So we've now come to the end of the service and uh, we can continue our Christmas uh, preparations and our celebrations at home after the service. So, But just before we come to our final song that you're uh, very welcome to stay with us and listen to, it's an old, old favourite hymn. Um, I'm just going to say these, these words of, of blessing to us all and if you could repeat the words in bold that would be wonderful. So here we go. We go in peace to share the peace of God with all we meet. We go in love, to share God's gift of love with the world. We go in the light of Christ, to shine as lights in the world. To the glory of God the Father, Amen. So please stay with us for a few minutes to listen to Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And also, uh, during, during Christmas we're raising money for different charities and as you listen to Heart, the Herald Angels sing, there'll be details of the charity that we're supporting through this service. So if you'd like to give money to that children's charity, details will follow. Have a great Christmas. Get to bed early. It's going to be a busy day tomorrow. And the sooner you get to bed, the sooner welcome guests will arrive. Have a great Christmas. Bye.